Okay, let's see this place build up. Actually, I want to go check out this upper level that she added. That's really cool. Excuse me. Oh, also, free loot. Don't mind if I do. Fine. Just do whatever you came here to do and get the hell out of here. And stay out of my stuff. <laughs> As we're completely re redesigning her home. Okay, there's our desks. Cool. Radio beacon. All right. A couple of uh, interior plots here. It's very nice. And then one more level. And it looks like maybe even another level after that coming in. So this is like preparing for the next level of the outpost. That's pretty cool. And now that we're our own faction, I'm no longer satisfied with this Minutemen flag. I can't wait till we show you till we can show you guys the uh, the new flag system. All right, what do we got in here? Little tiny crates. I love when people resize the supply crates. It's awesome. Hey, all of our workbenches. Oh, hey, now we can build the thing we were going to build earlier. Just to have it. I guess we need it. I might as well build this one too. There we go, in case we need those control tapes. What do we got back here? This looks like plots, but did she actually do placeholders? Like, put in manually, like, the the stuff to make it look like plots are, are building there? That's pretty cool. We're ready for battle. Bring it on. Bring it on, gunners. This is really intriguing. I'm very curious what's going to happen here. This fun thing about using city plans is that I'm not super familiar with all the levels already. So that I can kind of imagine what's going to happen. What we got going on up here? Is this this has got to be a watchtower, right? Communications. Awesome. Let's see if we got caravan services or not. I might build that just because the place is struggling with the resources. Oh, and we need to hit the workbench here and up our max size. There we go. Now we got some space. 15 people out of the 11 beds. So we are well done on the population side. We should have plenty of resources because we are connected to the caravan network. Oh, yep. There's our caravan services. <laughs> and our Brahmin fell through the floor. Sorry, buddy. Well, what else we got? It looks like it's going to take care of itself. What do we got here? This is a hospital, right? This is the Nightingale Hospital, I think. Yep, General Hospital. All right. So we've got ourselves an armory. Checkpoint Alpha. This looks like, yeah, here's our field hospital. POW lockup. Okay. I really want to make sure we have a battlefield scavengers because... We need supplies desperately. But I need to build some watchtowers elsewhere. I might go to the nearest settlement and add a watchtower there too so that there's a benefit to it. Lots of supplies, well, plenty of storage. Not messing around, that's awesome. Bunch of beds in the garage, okay. This must become a bunkhouse or something. Makes sense. What else can we do? Let's go set up our uniform. We haven't done that yet. All right, let's set up some of our rank stuff here. Set military uniform, let's see what our options are. Let's see, we're the academy. What's gonna give us the best academy look here? I don't think any of these, we need more options. Everybody in Vault 111 jumpsuits, that seems smart. Let's see how everybody looks. Let's watch you transform into your jumpsuit while you're sleeping. There he goes. All right, okay, we got our uniform set. Got a lot of new plots built up. We haven't done an LTC yet, we can start that. Where's the warp liner stuff? Let's see here. A few notes. Here we go. Here we go. Mysterious benefactor. Let's go talk to Miss Charlotte. To Bunker Hill we go. Where is this battle going on? I want to be a part of it. Sounds like two battles going on, actually. I hear one over this way. And somehow we got XP for it. Oh, is it CPD over here? Yes, it is. Commonwealth Police Patrol. For any crime reports, complaints, Ooh, applications, or bounty claims, please see one of our senior officers at HQ. Here we go. Are you followed? Mm -hmm. Is there someone who would want to? Oh, well, you and I both got enemies that would love to overhear what we'll be talking about. You know? No, I don't think so. Good. We have to be careful. You'll compromise our location. And believe me, you don't want that to happen. My name is Charlotte Everest. I represent an interested benefactor. As I understand it, you need supplies. A lot of them. And you need them fast. That's where I come in. I can move the supplies to your outpost discreetly and make sure the payment for them returns to the benefactor. What have you got in the way of supplies? Whatever you might need to keep your people fed and equipped. It'll mean you can focus on, uh, well, whatever you want them to be doing. 
instead of making their own gear or making rations. Who are you people exactly? That's not important. My client would prefer to stay anonymous. At least until we've built a bit of trust. Sure, I'm interested. You won't be disappointed. It'll save you a lot of time you would have wasted on trying to keep on top of production. It's not a service you get from anyone else. Definitely not anyone in the Commonwealth. No one else can keep up with the volume you'll need. We can get your people enough weapons, ammo, meds, gear, and food to keep them happy. You won't even need to directly spend your own caps on it. If your outpost generates income, they can pay us with that instead. Most importantly, it's totally under the table. All quiet and no fuss. No one will even catch on. Should be more reliable than your average caravan. Fantastic. We're gonna need this, because I was just complaining about my supplies. Ammo and meds? What kind of basic supplies are those? Your people will need chems to stay healthy and ammo for, uh, well, obvious reasons. We got plenty of the common types, and once we get going, we can supply you with the real niche stuff as well. So, what kind of weapons do you have? We can supply you with simple weapons, easy. But the guns that pack a bigger punch are harder to make. And draw more attention when we move them. We got them. But we'll sell them to you when our lines are more secure. And eventually, I'll see about getting you some extra special stuff. What kind of stuff do you have? Armor's pretty important, right? The heavier stuff is harder to move because it takes up more space. But I can get basic gear into your people's hands quick. Also, there's food. If you don't want to waste the time and people to grow your own, then it'll be pretty important to keep the pantries full. If you just need the super basics, like wood or metal, that stuff is child's play to move. I can get you those on the spot if you got the caps. All right. We can do business. Awesome. I mean, <clears throat> good. It's a pleasure to make your acquaintance. <laughs> All right, need to establish a capital city. Let's, well, yeah, yeah, let's do it. Definitely sanctuary. That's our big, our big bad city right now. It would be nice to know more about you. I'm a mover of product, a smuggler, you might even say. I do it fast, quiet, and to mutual satisfaction. That's all you need to know. All right, your capital city acts as a hub of your empire, attracting trade, visitors, and talent. New settlers attracted to the capital city will have slightly higher special stat pools, and many other systems will use the capital city as an origin point. For example, the supply system that we're about to engage with from uh, Charlotte here will uh, uh, uses the capital city as its point of origin. There's more to this, isn't there? <laughs> Sorry, it's just your face. I really have you going, don't I? Sorry, I like you, but I really can't tell you any more than that for now. I'm under orders to keep this all hush-hush, you know? Maybe we can reach an agreement? You pick the when and where, I'll supply the stuff. Okay, let's sell some scrap here. So we have way too many organic and building materials. So let's sell some organic. So the way this works is in the top, you see your buy and sell price for 100 units. And it generally is designed so that your buy is always higher than your sell. And then you can see how many units per day you're generating. And the goal here is to sell off a lot of the surplus you don't need on a daily basis so that you can change it into other resources you need. The other route you have on a different screen, which I'll show you guys in a little bit, you can sell stuff that you have in storage already. So that's a good way if you're finding that your storage is overflowing with, especially those of you guys who are playing on component level difficulty, uh, if you find that your storage keeps filling up with the cheaper stuff, you can you know, increase your outgoing of the cheaper stuff because this will work on component difficulty as well. You can sell off individual things like I just want to get rid of all my wood every day or, or whatever the case may be. And you can clear out your storage from the other menu, which I'll show you. And then this one is to ensure that you have permanent control over it to make sure that your storage doesn't fill up with the cheaper resources. And so we're maxed out. So I'm going to just sell a bunch, not all of it. I'll keep a little trickle coming in and we'll commit to this agreement. So we're going to sell them 500 units of uh, organic every day and we will get make 733 caps back, which we can now spend on other stuff. So we'll commit to that and then we'll do the same thing with, we have 3,100 coming in. So let's sell a thousand. Actually, we're going to sell 2,000. There we go. We'll commit to that. And I think machine parts and rare, I don't have that many coming in, but let's check. I could sell, we'll sell a little bit of these. 
commit to trade agreement. Let's check our rare materials. And rare, we have almost nothing coming in. So we're, we might even buy some of those if we need to for HQ building. All right, so now we're going to be selling them 2,500 to 100. Now we'll go to supplies and we're going to use that. So now we have a uh, daily profit of 2,400, which we can easily spend on supplies now. So we'll go ahead and we're going to need a lot of ammo for assaults. So let's increase. Let's say do a thousand, that's 1250. Okay, so that's half of our in new income. And then we're gonna want armor and weapons so that we can equip our troops. Let's do 200 armor, then we'll do 200 weapons as well. And chems are gonna be for curing your injured soldiers, so we are gonna need those at some point. All right, so we've got a daily cost of 633, and I bet we have a fair amount of surplus in our settlement network, which we'll be able to find out in a moment. So I'm gonna leave that for now. Let's exit here. Let's talk to her. Hey. And let's go to the barter quiet. screen. Sure. Let's take a look. Let's check the manifests. So here is where you can see how many caps you have. Because what this system does is it, it hides your personal caps and it drops in what the settlements have. So the settlements have 156,000 uh, caps right now. So that 600 per day I'm spending is, is a drop in the bucket. So totally fine to be spending excess. And this is also where we can buy uh, priority shipments. Okay, yeah, so we can't sell individual shipments here. I think that's one of those features that's been requested. And uh, I need to add that in. So I was talking about that earlier, being able to sell. But we, we need to add that on the large plan of uh, future content where on your side you'll have shipments you can sell to them of like, here's all the stuff I have in storage right now. We just have to add that in. Let's buy some chems here. Let's see. So this is going to cost... That would cost us half of our caps. That's too much. But let's buy 500 chems for 38,000. Very expensive. Yeah, we'll buy that. That should at least get us a little buffer. We'll get... Tomorrow we'll have a shipment of armor and weapons and ammo come in. There we go. Okay. Well, at least we got... Hopefully our uh, armory situation sorted now with all that trading. All right. I want to go bop over to spectacle i'm going to try using the tool to summon all our settlers to us and see how many people come from egret there feels like something really wrong here that the, this would have 17 when 15 people should have moved in from here because this is the only other outpost i have so let's do a do i have the town meeting gavel no i have city manager tools though so city manager tools town meeting gavel and gather around let's see if all 17 people show up. Easy living, this ain't. Oh, somebody just ranked up. Me? Wish I could say I had half the guts you do. Standing Let's see up to a what settlement you're tied to? Spectacle Island. Reach it twice yeah. your size? That's no joke. Oh, that's it's right. Hard. It's the Freedom Fighters. Yeah, I, I forgot about them. I told you, you get something? all of the all on? of Sal's Freedom Fighters you join you. What's going on? Need something? That's what it is. I was like, how What's did we get on? so many people? I totally something? forgot about I the Freedom Fighters. That She's totally ripping off my thing. And that's the people that What's were in this on? armor. What I was thinking need? that we had loadout triggers. Totally forgot about the Freedom Fighters. Okay. That makes sense. All right. So now I want to pass time and make sure that our supply agreements with... Uh... Okay. So you can see the 500 chems appeared that we bought. You can see those. So let's see if we get our shipments in. If I rest, where is a bed or chair I can borrow from you guys? Here we go. Yeah, we'll just do the full 24. That's fine. Also, this is this is meant to be my home. Someone stood up. Oh, that's cool. All right, and we wanted to check. Yes. Did we get our? We did. We got our shipments. A thousand ammo, 200 armor, 200 weapons. Fantastic. Happiness is no good here. I think we need to give these guys a few rec plots. Let's do that real quick. Yeah, I'll give you guys a nice big fat three by three here. I can't remember what's on the three by three rack by default. Oh, that's the stage. That's right. We would have put that inland. <laughs> that's gonna need some guards for the stage shows. All right, we'll put this big fat thing over here. And you guys are gonna need power. Nope, doesn't quite reach. All right, let's build a big fat sim settlements power pole. Yeah, we'll do a flag one. That feels correct. There we go. You guys still need more happiness. You're so angry. And we'll give you guys a nice little park over here, too. Down in the weeds. All right, let's make sure that this ends up building the central park. Here's building plan. Yeah, we want relaxation. There we go. All right, that ought to help cook up some happiness for us. The rec plot didn't have power. Uh-oh, you're right. It does not have power. Oh, I plugged it into a thing that... Right, my turn. I'm going to show you how to sing a song. Right. <laughs> That's Gwyneth. Probably. Probably. <laughs> Properly. You show them Gwyneth. I can do better than that load of tosh. I'm gonna give you all a good show for once. I can, can sing all the best ones. 
Right. I'm ready. Play the music, Maestro. All right. Let's see. This one is powered. We should have plenty of power here. No. No, not that one. Another. What? Seriously? Another one. Yes. Yes. Let's see. Yeah. Where? Here we go. This is a good one. All right. I don't know why these guys aren't getting powered, but baby, when they drop that bomb, we'll just crawl out through the fallout with the tower. Da, da, da. When your thingy's getting higher, hurry, don't delay. I'll hold you close and kiss those rays burns away. Roll out, there's the roll out, baby. Oh, that whistling was real loud, Mayor. This guy's a beautiful singer. Think about Don't mess with Gwyneth. All right, let's change one of these interiors. Or we're going to just switch one of these to an armor. Because I think that is why we couldn't uh, update people's gear. Crawls out to fall out, cause la -di da was clean. If you die da -da -da today, just how long is this song? <laughs> la -la -la, you're all your life. La -da -da, I mean, I wonder why it's not playing the music. We have like some like a really bad recording of each of the songs without lyrics. It's not playing for some reason. Don't remember it being this long. Who made it longer? Who was it? That's your lot. I'm done. Stop the music. All done. Yeah, you're the best. Thanks, Winnet. We appreciate the, the number there. All right, let's see if our... Okay, good. It's being built. I want to check if our soldiers get the equip gear. I know the armory is a requirement of it. All right, did, okay, we got battlefield scavengers. Now the icons are showing up. We got a prison. Now we got our armory. Okay, let's go find, find somebody. Not this guy. Although I don't... I like your gear. You, you got some cool gear, but let's check it out. Armory options. Oh, it did it. It just changed him. He got his gear because we had enough supplies. Armory options. Yeah, here we go. Change loadout. All right, so we've got civilian conscript, and that's it right now. There we go. So now we need to unlock more loadouts, which I think is the next thing we're doing with. Uh, but yeah, the loadouts weren't showing up because I didn't have an armory here. Let's get the loadouts going because the loadouts are where we start getting real gear instead of <laughs> just uh, pipe pistols. Don't reckon Please you're from around here. You Got all your will teeth. Not be as a valid excuse for shooting someone. <laughs> Thanks, ventilator. Down to the here we go. Going down. How come I've never heard of you before? I am from the Commonwealth. And I prefer to keep a low profile unless circumstances dictate otherwise. That doesn't really answer my questions. If my responses were inadequate, perhaps in the future. Your queries should be more specific. Chief, <laughs> just getting our new head of military caught up on HQ procedure. It is a different structure than what I'm accustomed to. So, the orientation is appreciated. Still haven't told me what you are accustomed to. Are you always this suspicious? It's part of the job description. Besides, it's nothing personal. He's just an unknown factor. Interrogation was to be expected. And it helps present a clear picture as to the kinds of people I'll be working with. Considering security and military will have their overlaps, I consider this a useful opportunity to socialize with a colleague. Did you need anything? It would be wise to grow our military while I work on decoding the intel we recovered from the gunner overpass. I believe I now understand the process in which orders are assigned and processed within your HQ. So, Perhaps we should get started. For orders to be processed, you're gonna need way more people than we have right now. Unless you're planning on winning this war all by yourself. If that were feasible, it would present a more efficient option. But, you are correct. More officers will be required in the long run. Though, I have certain proposals in mind that shouldn't take much time or manpower to accomplish. We can always use more experienced soldiers. Indeed. Train military personnel that are able to make judgments and carry out advanced orders. The more veteran officers I have, the more we'll be able to do with our troops. 
What do you think we should do? I've submitted two proposals. One has to do with our standards of recruitment, and the other offers an alternate goal for assaults on enemy targets. What exactly are we looking for? Once our number of outposts begins to grow, and we require more people to staff them, it's going to be more difficult for you to personally see to recruitment. Frankly, it's already a waste of your time. Delegation should be a priority. There is benefit to recruiting yourself, of course, as you are able to handpick who fights for you. For filling out the ranks, however, it's best to leave that in the hands of your outposts. The proposal I submitted is a basic standardization of equipment and training that rookies will be given upon recruitment. Eventually, we'll be able to recruit specialized troops as well. Well, tell me about the options. Right now, we take control over any defensible location we assault once it's been secured. Which means we're the ones responsible for whoever's left standing there. And if we can't spare the supplies to make use of it, it'll only set us back. Precisely. During war, there is value to foregoing direct takeover in favor of vassalization. The residents would remain self-governing, but agree to supply us in exchange for protection. In the future, we would be able to carry out other types of assaults that you may find useful to your strategy. Sounds good. Review the proposals and approve them when you're able. They will allow us to proceed. I'm going back to work. Looks like you two have everything handled. Yes. Your insight has been invaluable. Thank you, Aiden. Huh. You're welcome. There we go. Military Department Overseas Offensive Operations, Warfare Intelligence, and Overall Tactics and Strategy. It uses double its staff's combined rank to determine how much work can do each day. People who have not yet served as soldiers will be considered rank Your one. presence indicated need for my assistance. All right, so we should start out with, I think we can we consider Salvador rank five, even though he's not technically a soldier. So yeah, we start out with our 10 energy available for military so that we can do these first couple of projects. All right, so it is vassalization. We need logistics, which they are all backed up right now. Let's solve the logistics problem. Let's move a few of our idling engineers or facilities folks over let's go to logistics and I will never understand people's constant need for small talk all right we're looking for some endurance folks here here we go crow we don't need you in engineering anymore uh we're not going to take anybody out of admin yeah we can take people from facilities and engineering so nick that's probably actually enough there we go. All right, let's research vassalization. Wait for that to complete, and I think it should go fairly quickly. Yeah, let's go explore while we're waiting. Let's see what we got built on here also. Yes, please. All right, let's see here. Standardized loadouts, there we go. I just remembered there's an area over here, right here, we can repair, fix the flood. Facilities, repair, repair flooded area. Standardized loadouts complete, cool. See, he ain't so scary up close. Well, okay, maybe he's a tad scary up close. There we go. like he's gonna hurt nothing. I didn't think he was going to hurt me. I, uh, scare you? Aw, oh, don't feel bad, big guy. Take it as a compliment. Hey, Chief, I got a bone to pick with you. And Sal, too. It's nothing bad. She just means there's some stuff with the outpost that we wanted to talk to you about. I said what I meant. They did bring up some valid concerns. It would be in the best interest of our military to hear them out. If you're ready, I think you should hear what Teresa and Lupe have to say. Anything to report? I've made some headway in decrypting the intelligence we've gathered, but we can speak of it later. In the meantime, there are some immediate concerns to address. So, this outpost you and Sal set up, did either of you actually think about the people that are going to be posted there? Of course. After all, soldier combat readiness is of the utmost priority. Eh, wrong. <laughs> the utmost priority is making sure you even have soldiers there to begin with. And if you want people to join up without the chief having to bring them in, you're gonna have to make the place livable first. Or at least inhabitable. Okay. What needs to change? 
It's really not that complicated. If you want recruits to roll in on their own, you need to make sure that they'd have their own bunks. And that there's someone around to sign them on. An ASA and plot will take care of the second one for you, but the first? You're gonna have to keep an eye on yourself. I mean, honestly, soldiers ain't that picky. They can get most of the stuff they need from nearby settlements when on leave. But having a place to sleep on base? That's essential. You've already approved standardized equipment and training. This should help pave the way for setting up recruitment centers in our outposts. Makes sense. There we go. Recruitment center. So now we can rapid fire build up our army. Well, anyway, that brings us to the second thing. Hey, kid, you're up. Oh, right. Well, you already know outposts are all military and whatnot. Civilian things would just get in the way. But they'll still need supplies and, you know, power and stuff. The good news is that we're kind of used to managing logistics by now. So, if there are any settlements with surplus near an outpost, they'll sure enough to keep it running. Is there any other way to handle this? Maybe? I mean... You can just supply them directly, like any other settlement. And when you're, um, taking stuff over, then maybe we can salvage from those places to keep everything running. I can figure out how that'd work and get back to you. That girl you met? Charlotte? I don't really know where she's getting all the supplies, but she did offer to get our outposts anything they need to keep running. So, if there's too much pressure on us, and we have the caps. Maybe talk to her about it? Thanks. I always appreciate good advice. I'm glad that helps. It is a little different from how we usually do things, but we'll make sure to stay on top of it. As I previously said, these are all important things to address. I admit, I've rarely had access to such long-term infrastructure or supply networks. Yeah, well, you're playing for our team now. That means you got people who can handle the behind-the-scenes stuff. I told you you'd like working for us. You have told me that. I yes. Guess. Let's just hug this out and get it over with. I do have one last matter to address. It's important that you understand the various roles our troops will fulfill while assigned at an outpost. There are four major roles, and assignment is largely automatic. However, you can speak to the soldiers to reassign them. You have the final say in who performs what duty. The most active role will be that of the warriors, who will accompany you to any assault. However, there is also guards, patrols, and support. Do you wish me to explain them in greater depth? Yes, let's hear what you have to say. Tell me more. Oh, let me guess. Guards protect the outpost. Maybe even while everyone else is off fighting? Correct. That is a good explanation. Oh, thanks. <laughs> And, um, patrols. Keep an eye on the area? Correct again. Patrols will secure the area surrounding the outpost and come to the aid of any nearby settlement that comes under attack. They won't be called away for assaults either. Look at you, kid. Careful, Chief. Lupe might be next in line for your position. I could see that. Oh, I don't think so. That would be way too much responsibility. Indeed. You are far too young for such a position. <laughs> but I suspect that could be the very reason Teresa made the remark, as it would be humorous. Always funnier when you explain it, Sal. Anyway, I guess support is just whoever's staying back to keep the outpost running and do all the other jobs. Yes, that is a sufficient explanation of the roles. That's a lot to process. Managing all these tasks will contribute to the effectiveness of our troops in warfare. It's time to discuss what I've managed to glean from the intelligence we recovered from the gunner outpost on the overpass. It appears they've set Vault 95 as their communication hub for coordinating the stingrays. Assaulting it won't be easy, and we'll need to ensure we have enough able soldiers. It would be prudent to attend to any outstanding needs our outposts might have before proceeding. However, the call is yours. What exactly do I have to do? I would recommend setting up a recruitment center, as well as ensuring any new conscripts will have a bunk waiting for them. Beyond that, this is a good time to familiarize yourself with the supply demands and role assignments, to make sure we're well equipped and ready for an assault. It's my top priority. I'm glad to see you're taking our people into account. I know there's a war on, but we'll be better off if we don't lose sight of all the folks making these battles winnable, you know? 
Yeah. Everyone's working really, really hard. We should take care of them as best we can. There's really a lot to do. I thought it might be a good idea to make some notes for you. Maybe it'll help keep track of everything? Regardless of your next steps, we'll await your command to attack Vault 95 when you deem us ready. Yeah. Oh, good. I've been meaning to do the prepare for War Hollow tape. I want to go through this and see if it's uh, bugged, because I know when I first gave it to the Alpha testers, I know they had a lot of issues with it, and then I assumed that a lot of it would just get fixed over time as we fixed bugs in the assault system, but I never had time to go back and try playing through it all. All right, let's check the, are there any military projects? Can, okay, we need water to do scouting runs. We need more military energy to unlock all this stuff. Okay, so we need soldiers, which means we need to run some assaults. There's a lot of stuff to do. All right, so let's see what everyone's doing here at Egret. All right, let's see here. Do we find anybody working their plots here? This person is, what are you? You're a warrior. You're busy training. Good, good work. Oh, I can start equipping people with gear, too. Hey, buddy. I'll change your gear. Armory options. Change loadout. Let's get you guys into some more interesting stuff. Uh, there we go. We've got Assaulter, Shotgunner, Sniper. All right, let's do... You're going to be an Assaulter. We'll just mix it up. Also, why aren't you guys wearing the team uniform? What's going on here? You are going to be a... We'll make you a Sniper. Why not? There we go. There we go, he got his team uniform finally. Good job, buddy. Hey, you should be guard. Let's switch you to guard and let's see if you still hang around Fine. here. Be careful out there. Manage soldier, change role. You're gonna be a guard now. Settlement. Yeah, stay at Eager Tours. There we go. What about you? What are you doing right now? Your support. Okay, that's correct. And let's also give these guys some gear. We'll give you this one. Cool. Alright, let's see our well, let's go see who's up on this hill over here. Anybody at comms? Yeah. Hey, buddy. You're a warrior. Okay. Yeah, we're going to make you a sniper, too. Anybody up here? Yep. Hey, buddy. All right, let's switch you to a guard, and we'll make you a sniper. You're in a nice spot for that. And assign loadout. Here we go. All right, so we know the loadouts are working now. Let's look at our bed situation. I think even though this is a city plan and it will build some more beds on its own, I think I'm going to cram a few in more in so we can get a few more folks just because I need I need bodies for my war. So let's try and find spots they're most likely not going to conflict. So I'm thinking up here and we'll use some sleeping bags so we can cram a lot in here. There we go. That covers all our people and have <laughs> that's our first extra. I think we can tighten this formation up a little bit. Oh, I think we can fit a few more in. And this guy, this is our bravest sleeper. He's very still. These guys are very friendly with each other. Okay, well, happiness is finally on the rise. That was the problem. I didn't realize the beds were short. All right, and now we can go queue up our recruitment to be the directly the people we want. Let us go to the recruitment radio for the academy. Let's recruit some soldiers. We'll just get one of each queued up. And then we'll get a doggo too. We'll queue two. Two dogs. That'll feel better. All right, and then we can exit here. Let's see what our resources look like here. All right, we still got plenty of armor and weapons. Okay, cool. It's not costing that much to equip everybody because it's just this low level gear, which is awesome. Plenty of chems for curing injured soldiers. Plenty of ammo to run a few more assaults. So we don't have to wait for the quest to do assaults. We could start assaulting places now if we want, but I think I'm getting ready to wrap up for the night. We're going to check out the holotape. I'm going to launch it real quick. Maybe we'll do the first one, just because I'm really curious. I haven't used this since back in alpha testing. All right, so this is the, the preparing for war holotape represents something I hope to do for all of our major systems, which our major systems to me are the plots, HQ, and then the war systems. So I would like to have one of these holotapes for each where people can learn all the deep detailed stuff on demand and then if they forget, they can go back and run these again. You know, it can be like a build your own radiant quest line. You just kind of do each of these because they give you XP and everything. They're not hugely, they're not a ton of resources, but a little bit. So we launched the first one here. Just to let you know we can cancel it if we want. Settlements can only su store supplies, ammo, chems, armor, weapon parts with proper storage. Non-defense class martial buildings will increase max supply storage. In addition, you can build special supply storage lockers found in the resource storage section of the Sim Settlements build menu and workshop mode. So I'm probably going to be asked to build a locker. Yep. So we can go ahead and do that. Let's go to resource storage and we'll find our lockers. We can probably sneak one up next to like the desks. 
I'm guessing there's not too much more that gets put into there. And we'll just stick this guy in the corner. Actually, we can maybe do a longer one right behind the desks. It's a very tight space. I know I don't need to worry about the green, but it's so satisfying when you manage to line it up. All right, donate 100 war or 100 ammo. I can do that. Let's go donate some items. Check out our ammo situation. You get some 38 rounds, guys. So this is just kind of a way to introduce a lot of the like nitty gritty stuff that NPCs have said in passing. Like Lupe says at one point, you can just supply them manually yourself like you do with settlements and that's this is what she's referring to. So these hollow tapes kind of make it more explicit tutorials as opposed to like it would have really slowed down the story if each of these things, those NPCs, when they told you about them, they then had to give you a little tutorial quest. So we are trying not to have it bog down all of the dialogue and the, the actual story beats and trying to keep it believable. This is one of the problems we have with tutorial quests is like making them not feel gamey when the NPCs are talking, right? Not having them explicitly say stuff like, well, hop into workshop mode and then click on this menu. Like that would feel really bad. So, okay, then this is like talking about Charlotte without mentioning her directly in case you haven't gotten that far to avoid story spoilers. Purchase a priority shipment from Caravan Services, which I don't think we can here yet because we need level two. So we don't have to complete this here if we go to Sanctuary. So, how's business? All right, provision. Which caravans come through here? There we go. Now priority shipments, and we will buy just a little bit of ammo. Sure, just to satisfy the quest. There we go, purchase priority shipment from Caravan Services. And that triggered the unlock of another tutorial, which is what that little prompt in the corner was. Basically, go, go check the hollow tape to see if there's anything you haven't seen yet. And we got a nice little XP for that. So a nice little way to find out what's possible in the mod. And so I want to do that for HQ and just for settlements in general. So kind of like all the stuff, if you wa if you watched detailed guides I've been putting out for SS2, basically turn those into, what was that? Oh, I got, I lost. I lost a battle. No longer allied to you. <laughs> I've never seen the icon actually come up. That was pretty funny. So we just lost a battle because we probably got assaulted and I don't have uh, watchtowers and stuff set up to get notified of them. So this was a this was a design thing I think most people don't even know that it's in the mod. Um, but once the gunners start attacking you, the gunners represent a, a mechanic that is not really talked about in pop-ups or anything. It's just implied through the story that they're at war with you. And we actually built this system so that other... NPC factions can go to war with you too. It's just not enabled yet. It's a system that'll come in the future. And that when you're at war with a, a faction, they will basically constantly attack your settlements and they'll aim for your weaker locations. And you won't get notified unless you have both communications and watchtowers set up. And that was done because, you know, one of the biggest complaints I think about the base game's assaults is it makes it feel like you can't explore and enjoy the game. You're constantly under pressure to come back and help defend. And even though you can technically ignore them and there's minimal penalty, you just kind of feel that draw. So the, the reason we did this was to make it kind of opt-in. So it's like you're not going to get those notifications unless you explicitly build two specific plots. Uh, otherwise, you won't be notified. So that way you can choose to ignore them. It also makes sense lore-wise of like, okay, well, you need to have people spotting it from another settlement, and then they have to be able to radio in to you for you to be notified. So it was kind of a way to get some lore friendliness and also an opt-in system. So players who just are not interested in running back and chasing down settlements. So now um, I think we should be able to hop over to Red Rocket here and fight ourselves some gunners. Oh yeah. Oh, it's Raiders took it over. Okay. And that is the other thing is we actually have multiple factions in there. It will tend to be the gunners because you're there at war with you. Um, but it doesn't have to be. I missed. session yet. <laughs> oh, we got another emulator over here. Oh, hell no. Ah, he's T-posing. Here, I'll help you out. Let me help you out of that T-pose.
And you can also prevent that from happening, from people just taking over your places by uh, having patrols set up, having... Uh, oh, look at that. They enslaved everybody and everything. You can have patrols set up. You can have guards set up. Because the guards don't have to be at outposts. So you can, if I send some guards here, set up a watchtower, I can prevent all that from happening in the future. So we'll probably set up a patrol here, but we're going to need an outpost much closer because this is really far from our army. We're way too far from Egret, so I think we're going to need... Oh, this is interesting. This is actually pretty fun. Uh, I like when this kind of organic stuff starts to happen. All right, so we're going to need to pick a settlement and turn it into an outpost on the north half. So we can take, take stuff back. But yeah, this, this kind of represents something we're hoping to have as the post story. This is kind of the stuff you'll be dealing with. Like you could basically start wars with different factions. Like I'm going to go to war and eliminate all the raiders or uh, the super mutants or whatever. And you'll, you'll be able to just have like a, a fight to take their empire out permanently. And I think that'll be like a fun loop. You know, you can make use of all of the unlocks you get throughout the end of the story and like the different building up your army and everything. All right, guys. I think that's a good place to stop. So. Thank you guys for joining me.